Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight for our finance version four and in-depth look. This will be our fourth webinar uh, covering Lodge Master version four. Uh, jumping into our housekeeping, uh, tonight's webinar is scheduled uh, for uh, 45 minutes with 15 minutes uh, reserved for a question and answer session at the end. Uh, all participants are muted and the slides and webinar recording will be uh, published approximately 24 hours after we conclude. Uh, if you if people registered and uh, were not able to make it, we'll email that out and also be posted on our support site and our social media channels. Uh, so jumping into uh, the content tonight, So tonight we will be, uh, as I said, taking in-depth look at the finance module. The finance module uh, was moved off the Silverlight platform in version 4.3.0, uh, which was published a couple months ago. Uh, so uh, after you're logged into Lodge Master, and if you have the appropriate permissions, uh, we'll navigate to finance. And from here, we're taken into the finance manager. Uh, tonight, we will be uh, covering everything from adding your account uh, to creating a budget, adding your budget categories, adding a budget year, and using the register for the account and budget we've added. Uh, so to begin, uh, we would add our first account. Uh, so to do that, uh, we click the add, we give our account a name, enter the account number that you get from your council office, the opening date of the account. For tonight's purposes, we will set it to the first of the year, and you'll enter the opening balance that's given to you by your council registrar uh, on the GL listing that they, they give you. To start out tonight, we'll start with a $10,000 uh, opening balance. You can enter a description. If you have multiple accounts to add, if you have a general uh, lodge ledger account or operations account, and then if you have accounts that are special uh, for national events or maybe a particular event um, or some other segregation of your accounts, uh, you do have the option to add another and it'll re leave this add account uh, modal open and allow you to enter an account uh, after this. And you can just keep going through that. If you have multiple accounts uh, with your council tonight, we just have the one that we're working with, so we'll click save. You can see it then adds uh, our account down here in our list of accounts. So this lodge, this lodge has uh, two accounts. They have a special events account and a operations account. Uh, you can see the description and the balance, which does update as you update the registrar and the register. Uh, so once you have your account defined, uh, we are ready to create the budget. Uh, you may have some budgets in your lodge, uh, the finance module, you may not. Uh, for our purposes, like I said, we are doing this as a fresh, uh, if you have not, as if you had not used the finance manager. Uh, so we'll be creating a new budget. So to do that, we click on budget manager on the top menu. This is, takes us to our finance budget overview grid. Uh, in here, you'll see a listing of all your budgets that you create. Uh, we have our uh, NOAC 2020 budget, which corresponds to that uh, special events account. Uh, we're gonna add a budget uh, for our general uh, lodge operations account. Uh, so I'm gonna click the add button in the menu. I'm gonna give our budget the name. Uh, this is not a year specific budget, although it could be in the example of a national event. Uh, this can be a multi-year or a general purpose budget. Uh, Cause as you'll see later, we do, uh, we then add, um, we create financial years or budget years uh, with this budget. So keep that in mind, this does not have to be year specific, uh, but it can in the event of a national event uh, or some type of region or special account um, that your lodge may have. For our purposes, we'll be creating this as a general lodge operations budget and then assigning budget years after we create the, the budget. Uh, so I'm just gonna give my name uh, operations for the budget name. You can add a description if needed. I'm gonna go ahead and click save. You can see down here, it added my operations account. At this point, we are ready to add categories uh, to this operations account. So to do that, I'm gonna click the edit, uh, the little pencil icon. In here, it takes you to a familiar looking uh, tree structure. This uh, carries over from the lodge structure. Uh, the controls are the same and the nav navigation is the same. Uh, so if you've worked in the new lodge structure that we have uh, and built that out to match your lodge structure, this editor, 
uh, and screen will look uh, very familiar to you. Uh, so we're going to start out uh, and we're going to create our uh, sample log budget here. Um, so we'll add our first uh, category group and this is going to be executive. Again, you can add a description. We'll hit save. I'm now going to continue to add my top level category groups. I'm doing that by selecting operations, because that's the name of our budget, and then clicking the add or plus sign. That creates a category underneath operations. If I were to click the plus sign at the executive level, it'll add a child underneath executive. So again, at the top level operations, I'm going to click the plus or add. And I'm going to go through and build out the categories in my lodge budget. You will do this to match your lodge budget uh, and how your council, how you may have set up your uh, finances with your council. So now we have a few of our uh, top level categories defined. We can go back and as I demonstrated with executive, we can add our child or the children underneath those top level categories. To do that, again, we select the top level category, in our case, executive. Under that, I will hit the plus to add a child category. We'll enter the name, description if needed, and then we'll click save. I'm gonna go through and we'll build out a few of these uh, children under the top level category. So that way when we get to the register, uh, you can see uh, how this would look when we start entering transactions. Uh, it'll also give us a better looking budget report. And if we look at our cash flow or activity reports, uh, you'll actually be able to see some movement of lodge funds. Uh, so I'm gonna take a few minutes here and just enter a couple uh, chapters. Next, I'll move on to my events and add any uh, events that you, you have called out in your budget. Uh, for our case, we're gonna do ordeal, brotherhood, and then vigil. Those are the three uh, event groups or how we wanna categorize our uh, transactions uh, for events. For this one, I realized that I made a name mistake. It's very simple to update the name. If you select uh, the category and the, the child under that, you can simply edit the name. So I'm gonna call this uh, Ordeal Summer Induction. Save over on the right, that is now updated. I'm gonna continue adding a few events in here. Uh, under inductions, uh, we may have, uh, you know, that's a separate category from our event. Uh, we, we do have, uh, you know, the vigil or a deal, uh, but this is actually the category in the budget where, you know, transactions are going to go. So for under inductions, uh, we happen to have a brotherhood committee. The ceremonies team uh, also has a budget line item uh, with our allocated uh, funds every year. So we're going to add them uh, under here. And the Vigil Honor Committee, they also are allocated funds every year. Continuing down under Admin and Finance. We 
we can either hit on the top menu and add, or the right click context menu also has all the controls needed to add uh, categories and children categories. And our last one under dues, we just have two. Save. At this point, we have our uh, budget built out with all the, the categories that our lodge uh, has set up. Uh, there is no uh, limit here, so you can build this out um, to match your lodge budget and how your lodge, uh, you know, how they structure their finances. Uh, so there's uh, a lot of flexibility here. Uh, you, you, you don't have to use the uh, structure we have tonight. Uh, this was just an example of a pretty common uh, lodge budget that we see, uh, but you're welcome to cu customize this in any way uh, that fits your lodge. Once we have the budget built, uh, or the categories built for the budget, we're ready to go back and create our budget year, where we're actually going to call out the uh, expense and revenue uh, for that year. So I'm going to click back to budget. I will select the budget, click manage. This takes me into the uh, budget years uh, manager. This is where we will add a budget year for every year that we're going to use that budget. Uh, and that goes back to where we said uh, it doesn't have to be a year specific budget because we add the budget years here and you're able to add or move categories uh, for each year. So just because you add in, say, uh, the Vigil Honor Committee uh, on your budget does not mean that next year, if you decide they're not going to be allocated funds, uh, they'll get their funds maybe through another committee, or that's going to go under an event. Uh, you do not have to add that to your budget year, so you don't have to create a whole new budget. Uh, so to create our 2019 budget, I will click the Add, fill in the year. If you have a, if you're creating a budget for 2020, if we're if we've defined our 2019 budget. You can clone another year. So if your 2020 budget is gonna look just like your 2019 budget, uh, you can select that here and click uh, save and it will clone that. Uh, we don't have anything to clone because this is our first budget. Uh, so I'm gonna say this is the 2019 year budget. I'm gonna click save. I click over here. I can select the budget year. I drop down operations. This is the budget that we defined on the screen before. You can see our categories have been pulled over automatically with all the children under them. If there's something I don't want in this budget year, if I decide uh, that the ordeal summer inductions doesn't actually belong in our budget this year, I can remove it by clicking over here on the remove. I get the confirmation. Now, our uh, ordeal inductions has been pulled out of the event. Maybe that was out of the budget in the past and that's not gonna be in your budget anymore. Uh, you simply you know, select that, remove category over on the right. It prompts for confirmation, click yes. It's now removed that uh, from our budget. That's not gonna be in our budget year this year. You can add that in further years. Again, uh, when you add the budget year, it'll pull all those categories in. You can add and remove as needed. At this point, we're ready to actually go in and start defining what our, and budgeting, doing what our expected revenue and ex expected expenses are. Uh, so we'll start uh, at the top. So the Lodge Chief, uh, this uh, category, uh, we know this is not going to be revenue. The lodge chief's not actually paying the lodge. Uh, so this is going to be a budgeted expense. So we say every year uh, we're going to uh, give him an allocation of $200 uh, to, to maybe go to some type of training or, um, you know, go to winter banquet or go to, a, a you know, maybe another lodge's winter banquet or some type of travel he has. Um, so we're going to allocate $200 for his expense. The officer retreat, again, uh, this is going to be uh, an expense. Uh, so I'll enter, uh, we'll say we budget 500 for that. Moving on down, our chapters, uh, we don't budget, uh, again, uh, them to, to bring any in any uh, money for us. Uh, so we'll budget uh, that each chapter gets $250 to spend of the year at their chapter meetings, maybe, uh, or some type of chapter retreat or maybe they use it, you know, something with elections, really up to however your lodge, we're going to allocate. And then again, it's $250 for each chapter. You can collapse these as you go down. Uh, so in the visual weekend, uh, for this particular, we do end up uh, bringing in some funds uh, because people do, they do pay us uh, 
to to attend that that event, uh, there is a registration fee. Uh, so what we you know what a, a good practice be that you know look back at your previous years, see kind of what your attendance was, and estimate. Uh, we know that we'll bring in about five hundred dollars for that based on the cost and previous attendance. Uh, we do have uh, expected expenses on that weekend though of three hundred dollars. Our winter banquet, same thing. Uh, we do expect, uh, you know, to bring in revenue for that because people are, uh, they do, they are paying us to to attend winter banquet. Uh, we know we have a large turnout every year, so we're going to estimate our revenue twenty five hundred dollars for that, um, based on the event price and, and the number that attend that. Our expense going down. Uh, we know that expenses, you know, it's a winter dinner. It's probably, you know. It's a, a more expensive event than maybe one of our fellowships. Uh, so we're going to budget uh, expected expenses of, uh, we'll say, seventeen fifty. Moving down, we'll just continue to fill this out. Uh, uh, I can collapse these and expand. Uh, it saves all my data in there. So in order to make, uh, to show the rest of the functions of the finance manager, I'm gonna quickly fill these out. Uh, so we know we'll give them the expected, uh, oops, we're not expecting them, sorry to bring in any funds, but we know that we are gonna allocate 600 for them. Ceremonies so team, they don't need quite as much. Uh, we'll give them 300. The vigil honor committee has to buy, you know, vigil certificates and uh, things for vigil weekend, and they get 400. Going down, uh, training posts, uh, they bring in lots of money for us every year. Uh, that's a, a great fundraiser for the lodge. Uh, so we we estimate 10,000 in revenue. Uh, luckily though, uh, the the training post committee is pretty good about uh, keeping their expenses and making sure we, we make money on everything. Uh, and they have some inventory built up. We're only estimating 2,500 in expenses. Membership committee, uh, they get 400. And the finance committee, they go out to eat a couple times a year, so they have a small budget item. Do this is uh, you know where we expect uh, where everybody's paying their annual dues. Maybe they're buying an annual pass. Uh, you could have another line item instead of just renewals. You could have dues renewals and maybe uh, annual pass or whatever your lodge calls that. Uh, but we will we will enter in here uh, that we expect to bring in fifteen thousand. We're not actually paying anything, but we do have national dues to worry about. Um, I don't, I believe that's $5 per person. Um, don't hold me to that math. Uh, check with your lodge advisor uh, or the Supreme Chief of the Fire or staff advisor on that. Uh, but we'll, for tonight's purposes, we'll say it's $5 per person. Um, in our lodge, uh, we do have to pay that to national every year. Uh, so we do budget that out. We expect we'll have, uh, you know, a, say we'll say with a thousand people uh, pay their dues. Uh, so that's going to be 5,000. That's just easy math for us. That's going to go to national every year. So save. And now if we go back to our budget, you can go back. This will take you back to your list of budgets. If you go back into manage uh, and select it, you can see uh, doesn't look like I think you hit back before you hit save, Joe. This isn't, uh, that's not ideal. Uh, so make sure you do click uh, save before you do go back. It seems I maybe have missed that step. Uh, so I'll very quickly go and fill this in for us. And you can see it does start totaling up uh, the expense and the revenue. Uh, as uh, my advisor said, I, I did forget uh, the critical save button there, so I do I do apologize for that. Um, so just again, remember to to save that as you're going through.
in a real situation, you uh, obviously want to make sure you're uh, entering actual numbers and going out and calculating uh, based on previous years what your revenue and expense would be so that your budget uh, isn't uh, too out of line compared to what your actual financials are. Okay, so there, our, our budget is saved. You can see that our revenue uh, is greater than our expenses. Uh, so at that point, you know, you may want to take a look at where you're spending money or where you're uh, bringing money in, take a look at your event costs. Uh, so those, you know, are closer to balancing out. Uh, for tonight's purpose, though, uh, this will work for us. Uh, so again, make sure you click Save. Uh, if we wanted to add another budget year uh, to show the, the clone, if I hit Add 2020, I'm going to clone 2019 and click Save. You can see that everything is cloned identical uh, as far as our uh, revenue and expenses uh, that does come over. Uh, if you do, you know, then you're free to go in uh, and you can make changes uh, and it'll update just for that budget year. And then you can clone uh, at that point any budget year thereafter uh, once they're in the system. Uh, if nothing, if this, we'll say that our 2019 uh, budget with all the chapters and the, the revenue and expenses, okay, we'll go back. And at this point, we're ready to go back to accounts and take a look at the register uh, for this particular account. So we're working in the operations account. If I click into register, I can see our opening balance of 10,000. I'm ready to start processing our monthly transactions. To do that, we hit the large add transaction button. This is for our, our 2019 budget year. It will show every budget in there. We're working the 2019. Uh, for our purposes, we are just gonna be working uh, in the year of 2019 uh, to make the reports look a little bit better. Uh, we will back this up uh, to January and enter some dues information. Uh, so your payee, uh, enter that. This does save as you go through. So this drop down, it may be blank for you, may have stuff in there. When I save this transaction, it will record where this payee is in the database. So next time you use, click the drop down, your list will be there. So that does start building dynamically for you. Uh, this person uh, happens to be paying their dues. So I select category and then I'm locate the dues. They're doing a dues renewal. Our dues, uh, I believe we said uh, we're 15. You can add a memo. Um, I guess we're 2019 dues, hit add another, save. You can see it loads this, keeps your date, uh, but does for everything else. We can just enter a few more. Um, uh, one thing to point out, excuse me, while Chad's adding that is, it really depends on how you decide to structure your, your register um, and how your council works. You may want to, and I know in the case of our watch, I just add a bulk dues payment entry at the end of a month um, or some lodges recorded in their point of sale system and actually the lodge can report it at, at the level Chad's showing where each separate person is recorded as an entry in the register. It's really up to you and how you want to keep your lodge books, whether you want to just do an entry at the end of the month that says, here's, we took this for dues and this for the ordeal and this for the banquet, or whether you want to report at the level of uh, each person. So it's really a, a large practice, basically. I think this is similar to what Mike was just talking about. Um, you can see we, we, we rolled everything up. If I enter, you know, we just continue entering some transactions here, uh, moving through the year. Uh, we are approaching our winter dinner now. Uh, our winter dinner uh, happens to be uh, the first Saturday in March. Uh, 
as Mike said, some lodges you could record individual payments here, uh, or lodges may roll up the whole event and event if they're you know using some type of point of sale or POS system. Uh, you may just have your uh, ex your income from that from people um, paying dues or you know paying for the event. Uh, so it is up to you. Uh, but we do want to show here. Uh, if you are using, a, say, a POS system that uh, maybe has categories or different items or something in that to, to break up transactions, um, so we'll call this our winter banquet. Uh, we do what we can do. What's called a split. Uh, we can split the transaction here between multiple uh, categories. So if I hit that split button, it does bring up this grid inside of the add transaction. I click add. Our category. So this will be, uh, we look for our winter dinner in here, winter banquet. Uh, we'll say, um, let's see. Uh, but we also took in, oops, we also took in, we know dues. Maybe our POS system can break that out for us. Uh, so we, let's say this was, let's adjust this amount down a little bit to uh, 500. We'll say this was the um, event fees. Uh, in, um, whoops, that's a different budget. Uh, but we'll say the trading post committee, um, they also had some sales at winter banquet, but all this is rolled up into one POS transaction, but you got a report that maybe shows this is broken out. Um, so like that. Again, at a memo, if you want, this is, you don't, you don't have to. Uncheck add another and I'm gonna click save. Oh, I forgot. So you can see the up here, I, I did forget an amount uh, for our uh, dues renewal. Uh, so you do have to have a, a, for every uh, line in your um, split transaction, uh, you do have to have a, a category and amount. I click save, you can see uh, this was split, um, but it does total it up. Uh, so as you can see what we are entering through here, uh, it does just start to build this out. Um, we add a few more transactions and a few more accounts just to kind of show what this will start to look like. We'll go to June. Uh, um, Again, the categories you'll define for your lodge uh, for our purposes tonight, uh, we're saying their deal payments maybe go under the membership committee uh, category. Um, that, that's up to you, of course, uh, how you split that up. Maybe they go in dues, but it's really up to however your lodge uh, handles that. So at this point, all we've entered is credit. Um, so it's very simple, add the transaction, uh, and fill out the form. Uh, but it's time we, we've got some bills that came in from some event that we that we need to take care of. Uh, so how we add debit. Uh, so we've only added credits at this point, but we do have to make some payments out. Uh, so again, we'll just select the date and the budget year. You may do your all your transactions at the end of the month. So all your transactions are gonna be on the last day. If your lodge rolls them all up into a you know, base category do the event, up to you. Um, we know we'll say for our winter banquet we had some expenses because I, I want to I want one good uh, I want to show you everyone what happens as we start building out these categories on the budget. So um, we had to pay high V. Uh, they catered the event for us. Locate our winter banquet. The amount put a negative in because we we're paying out uh, to them. Uh, they they charged us. Uh, $1,000. Um, food for winter banquet. I'm going to add another. 
he's my date. Uh, this one went to we bought some certificates uh, or some uh, awards, maybe uh, your founders or uh, James US to your council. Uh, in our case, we'll say uh, we're in a six that the BSA National uh, for our winter banquet. We had to pay them $75. Okay, so uh, you can see over here, if we take a look now, uh, we do have some debits in here uh, where we're paying out, uh, and you can see our credits in here. Uh, if you make a mistake or need to adjust the split, if we click edit, uh, you can go in. And if I was off, uh, we actually brought in, you know, 750 uh, for that, and I click save. Uh, it, it does update, so you are able to go back. Uh, if one of them is a mistake, uh, we hit delete and we can remove the transaction. It's not your registrar anymore. Uh, we can do account transfers. Uh, so uh, our lodge has determined that NOAC is coming up and in September at our um, LEC meeting, we determined that we need to put some money in the NOAC account to, to fund NOAC because uh, national open registration, we're gonna need to make that uh, the uh, down payment to national. So from our operations account, we're gonna go over to our special events and we're gonna move over, uh, we're gonna say that we, you know, we have to move over $2,000. Click save. Uh, you can see here, uh, the special event, it, that, that pulls in the, the payee, in the case of doing an account transfer, is who is the account it went to. Uh, so you can see it went to special events, uh, knock down payment, and that's a debit uh, of 2,000. Uh, so if we go back to our accounts, uh, you can see our special events now. That wasn't 500 before. Uh, it's not 2,500. Uh, you can see our balance is, is updating, you know, as we go. Uh, if we view, uh, you can go into the category register and do that same thing. If I go back and we hop back in, if we hop into special events uh, in here, you can see that credit because this is the special events account now not our general lodge operations you can see that two thousand uh, dollar it's a credit in this account uh, because it was paid uh, it was essentially funds were moved from one account to the other uh, so you can see that in there um, the thing we want to take a look at though uh, is some reporting now that now that we have a few transactions in here uh, let's see what that actually looks like in terms of some reporting so i'm going to select uh, budget reports we do have a couple uh, i prefer stacked uh, we, you can run either whatever works uh, our budget year 2019 our budget is operations that's where we're doing our work is in that general lodge operations if i submit we can take a look now uh, at uh, how we're how we're doing uh, so for our revenue you can see it pulls in what we budgeted so these you know we don't budget any revenue um for our lodge officers some of those that we just that's money being allocated to them uh, so if we take a look down at our event, though, we were working with Winter Banquet. You can see what we budgeted. Uh, you can see what we've actually brought in. We've only brought in 750, and the difference is 1750. So we know that somewhere, you know, a transaction from our QS system didn't get entered in uh, into our, our registrar, or, you know, for some reason, maybe that, uh, you know, got put later. Maybe it didn't get on the March financials. It was in April for some reason. Uh, whatever that may be, but you can see, you know, we're, we've got an issue there because we're, we're out of we're kind of short on funds there. Um, but going down, uh, you can see the trading posts. Uh, we budgeted they were going to bring in 10,000. We've only got a thousand. Uh, if we hop down, uh, then in the expense section, uh, so you can see it's broken up revenue and expenses. Uh, for our winter banquet, we expected our expenses to be 1750. Uh, they came in at 1,075. Uh, obviously, you know the difference there is 675. So we're okay. We're not in the red on that. Uh, we did well budgeting on you know what the cost would be. We didn't do so well uh, taking a look at uh, what we thought we'd bring in. If you scroll down, it does total it up uh, down here for what you budgeted your actual and then the different. Uh, real quick, we'll take a look at the grid sale budget operations year 2019 
Here, it just condenses it so you can see it all on one, uh, one sheet. Uh, so we'll take a look at the winter banquet line because that's what we've been working with. Uh, there again, you can see the 1750 variance because we're, we're, we're a little short on our income or revenue there, uh, but the expense side, we're looking good. Uh, this one does a nice job. I think it does a really nice job at the bottom. This one's maybe a little bit easier to read comparing uh, your revenue and expense where you're at compared to what you budgeted. Uh, if I were to go in to this, into the registrar, add a transaction, uh, say we found that missing uh, winter banquet payment in May, something happened, um, you know, we don't know what, but it just so happens that, you know, we found, we found our missing uh, payment. Now, if I go back, we run that grid budget. Uh, you can see uh, right here, uh, we did bring in, an act actually, we brought in 3,200, uh, so we did 750 better, or we're not in the red on that account uh, anymore. Uh, so you can see, you know, we did well there. Uh, we made some money. Our expenses were in control. Uh, and you can download and save this as a PDF and email it out uh, or save it as an Excel file. At this point, it, it's just a, a file you can take out of Lodge Master. When we take a look at our cash flow report, uh, we're going to run it for the whole year for our operations account. Uh, you can, obviously, just pulled in all your accounts. Uh, submit. So you can see our revenue. This breaks out. It's just a really simple uh, cash flow report of where, what your revenue, what uh, line items, what categories had revenue, uh, where your expenditures were, uh, and what our cash flow is. Uh, you can adjust the dates and you know run it for longer ranges. If you have multiple years of data in here, uh, obviously you know you can then start running it for different years and doing comparisons or running it for you know two or three years. If I look at the activity, uh, so we have several options here. Uh, we can you know do it for categories or groups or budgets. Uh, you can even get down to the payee level. Um, we're going to look at uh, category over here. Uh, we will select our winter banquet and run it for the whole year. This is just a detailed then ledger um, of that uh, that account or of that category. Sorry, uh, so you can see our uh, payments or our debits there in red and our credit uh, there what we brought in. We can run this for the top level category group. So events, if you're going to look at all events for the year, it rolls those all in and you can see every event listed in there. I won't do them all, uh, but the, the one I, I will show, the last one is by payee. Uh, so this just holds in a list of all those accounts. Uh, if you're doing it, you know, by, you know, if you're doing generalized payees, you know, dues or, uh, you know, monthly dues or however you're dividing that up. Uh, those do come in. So if you do need to see, you know, maybe who, how much you've paid a particular ben vendor, if you're ordering patches from a single vendor, uh, and you want to see kind of, you know, what what the activity has been to that vendor, um, you know, maybe they, they issued a refund for some, you made some payments. Uh, these activity reports are a good way to see that. Uh, so I will click close. Uh, that is the, the basic reporting there of finance. Uh, you obviously, you know, can go in and run those uh, for different categories and different date ranges and export all that out. Um, so with that, uh, that will conclude uh, our finance, uh, the, covering our finance uh, module for tonight. Um, we will be... Uh, so before, we go yeah. into, before we go into questions, uh, you had clicked into it quickly, and I just want to clarify for all our users. So Ted showed what an account transfer was, which is really the concept of the council, you have two accounts in your council's GL system, and they actually move money between those two. So in your in your ledger here, in, in Lodge Master, you want to add a transaction that matches that move of money so that you equal out the balances that the council has in their account. Um, category transfers are if you want to move money from, let's say, the trading post to an ordeal or from an ordeal to the trading post, let's say, to pay for sashes so that it doesn't show as a, a debit from the trading post 
um, but really shows us something that was an expense for the ordeal, um, that's what you would use the category he transfers for. Um, so you're basically going to move money just from a budgetary perspective between two entries in the budget. It's not going to actually move money between accounts or change the cash flow in any way. It's just really if you want to show when you're looking at those budget reports a certain amount of income and expense for different events. So um, taking money out of one account, putting it into another, or sorry, out of one category and putting it into another category um, is really the way of, of just moving that money from a budgetary perspective. Let's say you've taken all of your money from a, for an ordeal through that ordeal entry in your, in your budget, but then you want to move dues to the dues line and stashes and books to, um, to be paid for from the trading post, that's what you would use a category transfer for. And here you can see an example of that, uh, kind of along the example of Mike, uh, did our trading post to the membership for the sashes. Uh, so we don't actually, you know, we want to show that uh, the ordeal committee, or which falls under membership in our case, uh, they did uh, the sashes, the 750, if I say, uh, you can see that that does add in here. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, so it, it said random reports now, and it doesn't have to do it because we're running a little short on time. Um, but you wouldn't see that money move anywhere in the cash flow report, but you would see it in the budget report as to the money moving between the trading post and membership committee. All right, so that does, uh, you know, bring us to our 45 minutes. Uh, so I want to remind you. Uh, that uh, of our user group, uh, which is on Facebook, uh, and then our feature upvote site, uh, we're able to go uh, submit uh, ideas um, for what you want us to work on and then vote on ideas that are out there. Uh, we are on all the social channels, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel where we do post uh, trainings from like NOAC. Uh, we potentially will be some trainings from Lodge and section events on there, and then the webinars are posted there. Uh, an important announcements are posted on there. So if you're on those platforms, uh, you know, give us a follow. Uh, if you're in need of help, uh, stop on over to our support center uh, where we have documentation, some troubleshooting articles. Uh, you can submit support there. You can submit a support request through the uh, form. Uh, if you can't get logged in there or don't know if you have an account or, uh, you know, aren't able to maybe get to that page for some reason at work or something, um, you can send us an email, support at lodgenester.oa-bsa.org. That'll create a ticket for you. Uh, it does send you a link to the portal where you can view that, but you can also just communicate with us over email uh, by emailing support at lodgenester.oa-bsa.org. We'll respond uh, through our ticket system. Uh, please don't email us as direct. Uh, we do have a uh, support or a system status page. That'll give you an idea uh, if we are having, you know, some system issues. We, we do have to do maintenance every now and then. Uh, we try to uh, keep LodgeMaster online as, as much as possible but every now and then. Maintenance is required. Uh, so you visit status.oa-psa.org. Uh, you can uh, subscribe to status updates. That way you get alerts when we're going to be doing maintenance or something is you know down. Uh, you are kept up to date when, when we expect that to be back up. Uh, we do thank everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, we enjoy hosting these webinars. And we hope that everybody finds them beneficial. Uh, our next webinar will be in December. Uh, the topic and the date for that will be announced uh, probably in November. Uh, so look for that uh, next month. Uh, we will be taking uh, November off. So our next our next webinar will be December. Uh, we look forward to, to seeing everybody there. Uh, with that, we do have a little bit of time. Uh, so we will take uh, some questions and answers. Uh, I can hop in uh, back into Lodge after we can we can do uh, a, show you some things. Um, but uh, if you don't want to stick around for the questions, uh, thank you again. Uh, we appreciate everybody joining us, uh, and we'll see you in December. So, Mike, uh, would you could you help with the questions there? Do you have would you be able to read those off? So, um, we had a couple common questions come in from people. Um, one is uh, we actually had uh, three submission questions before the webinar about documentation for the primary module. Oh, yeah. So uh, we, we unfortunately do not have any finance uh, documentation uh, for version for the finance manager. 
Uh, but you could look back at version three. A lot of the functionality is the same. It just looks different. The idea of budgets though, and the revenue and expenses for those budget categories is all still there. Uh, with that said, we are looking for help with documentation. Send us an email, um, messages on a Facebook page or Twitter. If you, any way you can get in contact with us if you're wanting to help, uh, we would love help to write uh, docs on finance or anything in LodgeMaster. We'll set you up uh, with a sandbox lodge and you can go uh, record transactions uh, all night. Uh, we, we would love help, so get in touch with us. So um, we have one and uh, sort of a couple common questions about um, what the interface or how this links to the council general ledger system. And I, I can sort of answer that. So right now um, there is no direct link or anything of that sort between the council's general ledger system and the Lodge Master Finance module. Um, and it's not something we expect to be able to add any time in the future or at least not in the near future. Um, the finance module that the BSA uses is not an open API like some of the other stuff we've started to interface with the BSA for. Um, so it's not something we expect to be able to add um, anytime in the near future, at least. Um, but what we what we can say, so right now, um, if you're using LodgeMaster to manage your finances, you can get a, what's called a posted detail report from your council. Um, and you use that to, to input your entries into LodgeMaster on a monthly basis or whatever regular basis that you'd like to. Um, we do have on the feature upvote site and something that we can look at for the future is taking an Excel version of that um, posted detail report and allowing you to import that into LodgeMaster and then afterwards doing the splitting and tagging um, with the categories as appropriate. Um, so that's something we'll look at for the future. Right now, it's really a, a manual process of sort of looking at those entries from the general ledger system on the posted detail and, and inputting them into LodgeMaster. There is a lot of interaction required either way, just because every transaction would need to be tagged, and split, and done whatever from a Lodge perspective that you need to. So even if we do do some sort of import in the future, there'll still be a good amount of manual work to you actually need to credit it to where you in your lodge want to understand that the money lives versus the council's really just putting it all in one big pot called the OA. You may have a couple accounts, but um, for the most part, it's not tagged with anything at that level. So it comes down to you to then sort of identify everything and, and credit it where the budgets that you need to. It does look uh, like, uh, Mike, if I could step in quick, we do have to yeah. with their hand up. I am going to uh, unmute your line since I don't, uh, if you have a question, go ahead and ask that, Adam. We'll, we'll do our best to answer that. Do you have a question? All right. If you do have a question, go ahead and put it in the Q&A. It looks like you had your hand up uh, on the webinar, so I, I did mute your line. But if you do have a question, uh, put it in your Q&A &A, uh, or send us an email. Mike, do we have other questions tonight? Sure. So one of the other sort of common questions that we had was whether this links to dues and events. So if you add a payment entry for dues or events in LaunchMaster, is that going to affect the finance module? Uh, it does not. Uh, the finance module is completely independent uh, of events and dues uh, in your in LaunchMaster in your database. So if you do record a dues uh, payment. Uh, on somebody's record that does not record your finance uh, module, you will need to go record that. Um, and we did just have a question come in from Adam about whether there's a report comparing multiple years. Um, that's not something that currently exists, but that's certainly a great idea. So um, you're more than encouraged to add that as a, a suggestion on the feature voting website. And it's certainly something that we could look at for the future. I think that covers all of the questions that we had in the question and answers. Um, one that came in through the chat we already covered. Um, I will be able to stick around for a few minutes until about nine if anybody has questions. I see there's a number of you left. Um, so we just had another question come in. Um, how many levers, levels of category children are there? So under a budget, there can be category groups. 
and categories under there. So it's a, a three level structure, starting with the budget at the top, groups of categories and categories under that. So it's really two levels under a budget. I think that's so all the questions and we covered any of the ones that came in in the registration for the webinar too. They were common with the other questions that we've got tonight. Okay, perfect. And if there weren't any, uh, were there any, are we following up with anyone after the webinar, Mike? Uh, we do. There were a bunch of people who asked, uh, one or two that asked a specific question about things in their lodge database. Um, and then most were just asking for links to the recordings and stuff, which we can send out after. Okay, so if you if you are on here and didn't get your question answered, it does sound like we uh, will be following up with you uh, directly after this. So, uh, you know, if we didn't get to your question, uh, we aren't ignoring you. We, we do have those saved from the, the registration. Uh, and it sounds like uh, we know which ones will be, we'll, who we'll be following up with. So look for an email uh, tomorrow from us uh, following up uh, from tonight. Uh, so I don't see or I don't think we have any other questions coming in. Uh, so again, I, I do want to thank everyone. We really, really appreciate your guys' support. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see you again in December. Look for the recording tomorrow. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.